I got a brand new HP Pavilion X360 laptop, 2-in-1. I'm going to do a little upgrading inside and some cloning. I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new HP Pavilion X360 2-in-1 14-inch laptop. Um, customer just bought it. Doesn't really have anything on it, so to speak, but um, it came with only 120 gigabyte uh, M.2 SSD. They want to ha have a little more storage space, so I'm going to accommodate them. They chose to buy a Samsung Evo 970 Plus or a 970 Evo Plus NVMe drive. They're really good, really good quality drives. I use them quite a bit, along with Crucial and Western Digital. It only has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in it. I'm going to add another 8 gigs. It's 3200 megahertz DDR4, so we're going to double it up to 16 gigs. But um, instead of doing a clean install of Windows 10, which I could easily do, I chose I'm going to do it for, for this video. I want to do a clone, and I'm going to use the free data migration software from Samsung. It's free to download, and I'll have a link down below uh, that you can click on to go right to it and get it. So. Uh, before I get into the cloning and the parts, I want to give you a quick overview of the laptop. It's a brand new model. It has the 11th generation Intel Core i3 uh, 1115G4 processor. It says it's got 8 gigabytes DDR4, 3200 memory. It has a 14 inch standard HD display, 1366 by 768. Um, it's got a 3-cell, 43-watt-hour battery. Of course, you know the touch screen. It is a 2-in-1. Pretty portable, pretty thin. Uh, not, not bad as far as power is concerned. It's not like you're, it's a gaming computer by any stretch. But um, it comes with a standard 45-watt AC adapter. And get it back over here. On the side over here, we have, <clears throat> this is where our power cord plugs in. We've got an HDMI port, got USB A type, USB C type. And we got an SD card reader there. And over on this side, we have our headphone jack and another USB port. It's a USB 2.0 port, it looks like. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, see, did I miss anything here? Okay, the exact model of this laptop is 14M DW1013DX. That's the exact model in case you have one just like it. So. What I'm going to do, guys, like I said, I'm going to clone, and for this video, I'm using a USB adapter, this type of adapter. I have quite a few of these laying around in the store here. We use them all the time. I have a link down below where you can go online and buy one of these. They're a little expensive, but they're very reliable, but it's actually an enclosure. You can just put any old M2 NVMe drive in here, use it like an external SSD. Now this particular enclosure will not support an M.2 SATA drive, just an M.2 NVMe drive, like our 970 plus here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. It's 250 gigabytes. So we're almost going to double the space that they have. Going to pop it in. There's no tools. It pops right over the little rubber grommet there. Slide it back in and then we're simply going to plug it into our USB port. And I've already downloaded the Samsung data migration software and installed it on the computer. It's right here. I'm just going to double click it. And it pops right up and it shows up here our source drive. In this case, our little 128. Only 119 gigabytes available. Our source or our target drive is right here. It's seen our Samsung in the USB port. You go down here and simply click on start. And it's just letting you know that anything on that drive in the enclosure is going to be gone. So we're going to hit OK and let the process start. Now once it gets to about 1% there, I'll pause and I'll come back right at the end and wrap it up. We'll open it up and put the new parts in it. And this doesn't take too long here. Not a bad little laptop, little 14 inch. The 11th generation i3s. I've done a few of the 11th gen processors. Gotta wait for it to start here, guys. It should pop up any second. 
Now one thing I'll mention, I've noticed on these, uh, a lot of the new HPs and even the Dell laptops, for some reason, they come right from the factory out of the box with the drive encryption turned on. Uh, you have to go into settings and go to update and security. And down at the bottom left, the bottom, you scroll down where it says device encryption, you have to select it and turn it off before you can start any cloning. Can't clone your drive while the drive encryption is turned on. All right, so we got it started here at 2%. Shouldn't take too long overall, so I'm going to pause this and I'll be back right at the end. Alright guys, the clone finished, it went good, so I'm going to close out the migration software. It took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take, about 15 minutes basically. So now all I'm going to do is shut down the laptop, unplug my little doohickey here, my USB adapter, get my new drive out of there. You can see these pop right out. And we're done with that. Oops. We're going to unplug our power cord. Now we're going to open it up. So, make sure your laptop's off. <coughs> All right. On these, sorry guys, I need that power cord anymore. Okay, there's one exposed screw on the bottom. On the bottom here, it's right here in the front, it's very tiny. I'm using a number zero or a PH zero magnetic tip Phillips screwdriver. Don't skimp on your tools, you want a really good quality head to get the screws out, especially this one. It's very small and you don't want to strip it. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that out. It's a very small, short little screw. You can see there ain't much to it. So I'll put it over here on my magnetic board. Now we have to carefully remove these rubber feet that are on the bottom. They use a self-adhesive and there's always enough adhesive left where you can put them back on without any trouble, but if not, you can always use a dab of glue on the ends and in the middle to keep them secure. So you want a really good sharp tool to get underneath the end here to, just to get it started and you're going to slowly peel it up. It's pretty straightforward. Try not to stretch it too much. You don't want to make it longer than it needs to be so it goes back on easier. But just carefully peel it off. You're not going to hurt anything. I'm going to lay it on something so you don't get a bunch of lint and dirt and stuff stuck on it because they're very, very sticky. So I'm going to do the same thing in the back corner here. You can see how I just kind of lift that up. Get some adhesive there. They're, they're very sticky, guys. You can see. But I've done a million of these and I've never, ever had any issues putting them back on. And on, on this model, they're, they're both the same thickness, but make sure you put the back on the back and the front on the front because they got these little nubs here that you need, need to make sure those line up. All right. So we got two screws, two screws in the front here in the corners, and the same in the back. Okay. So we're gonna pop that out. And I always like to put the same screws back in the same holes, if possible. <clears throat> if they're the same diameter and length, it really don't matter, but never hurts to be perfect. Now, as with any job or project like this guy, I can't stress enough to you about static electricity because it does exist. My shop is all, my benches and my floor, my work area is all anti-static. Our bench tops here are all coated covered with a commercial grade anti-static carpet, plus we treat it with uh, something called static side. It's a commercial product you can buy that you can just mist on stuff and makes it anti-static instantly for days and days. So be careful, use a wristband or an anti-static mat of some sort. Just make sure your work area and yourself are anti-static. All right, so we got the screws out now to open it up. I'm gonna take my little spudger tool here and I'll have a link down below where you can buy some of these. We have to get into this little seam here where the gray meets the silver. Okay, so I'm going to pick a corner back here and get my little tool in there, camera guy, if I can. And you see I got it in the slot, or started. I'm just going to start slowly, carefully. You can hear it popping, that's good. And you can see how it's starting to come up there a little bit. But don't use metal tools or a screwdriver because you're going to booger up your computer and leave all kinds of ugly tool marks. These, once you get it started here, you can see it comes off pretty easy. 
without too much hassle, it just kind of breaks free there, just like that. Okay. So inside's a little tricky here. Um, they got these thin metal shields over the two RAM slots, and our MV. ME SSD is right over here. These aren't screwed on, but they're kind of pressed on in these little slots along the perimeters. So we have to, before we do anything though, I'm gonna remove the battery. In this case, the battery doesn't plug in. It just plugs in right here to the board. It doesn't have a, a, a cord or a harness. So there's some screws that I have to remove here. Camera guy, I'm gonna start right over here. Just be careful now, because there's still potentially power going to these circuits in here. Don't drop screws or your tools. Don't want to fry anything. But taking the battery out is oop, fairly simple. Again, using that number zero Phillips screwdriver. These screws are all the same on the battery here. Alright. Get my little tool here. <clears throat> Yep, I think I got them all. So now, uh, we're going to just basically lift it up. Just like that. Okay? There's little notches, there's a little um, foot right here that has to go underneath this little guy right here. So when you put it back in, you have to start here and push it down. So we'll get the battery out of the way. Um, so, Let's do our RAM first, but you know what, before I do that, I always sometimes I don't want to forget, once you get the battery out, I'm going to hit the power button a few times here, guys, to discharge any residual stuff that might be floating around in there. That should be good. Alright, so we have to lift this cover off here, so what I'm going to do is take a plastic tool, and there's little open spaces right along, whoop, right, right along the edge here, where if you get something under it careful, you can kind of start it. But these are kind of tricky to get back on. You got to line up. Just want to put it back on the same way. These little clips all along the edge here, you have to get them all lined back up to snap it back in these little fingers here. It's just tricky to line up. So what I'm going to do, that's 8 gigs. I'm going to put another 8 gig stick right next to it. DDR4 3200. And we're done in there. So now I'm going to try to get this back on. What I usually do is I start, oh, just a minute guys, in, a, in the end right back down. You have to bear with me while I get this line back up because it's not real easy. And I don't got it. Oh, shoot. I've done so many of these but none of them ever go back on easy. I'm starting down here instead. Sorry. Just got to get it lined up right. I think I got it. That felt good. Can you see that camera guy? Yep. I got it back in the little clip, so we should be good there. Make sure it's... Alright, now we got to do the same thing over here. The NVMe drive. We got to lift this little guy up. Uh, let me get over there. I'm using a metal tool here, but just be very careful. You need something very thin to get that popped off of there. <clears throat> so I want to damage the motherboard. So here's our NVMe 128 that we're going to take out. There's one screw right here that holds it in place. <clears throat> get that out of there. So we'll get rid of the 128 and we'll put it on our newly cloned on to 970 plus here. And hopefully we got a good clone. You can see how it lines back up in there. But now you can see why it's important to get rid of that battery and stuff because these metal covers, if you drop one on the motherboard, zzz, that wouldn't be good. Nice. Right, so now we're going to put it back on. Now, um, Heat, I'm going to just stick with the factory heat shield that they have on here. I could always, you know, use the heat pads here, but I just think there's not going to be enough room. I think it's a little excessive in this case. Plus, it's not like this is a gaming computer. So I'm going to leave it just the way it is and use this factory heat shield here, hopefully to absorb the heat coming off that SSD. But now i got to get this line back up. 
Gee, did I get it the first time? Well, that's not always the case, but I got it back on there the first time, so we should be good. This should give us plenty of protection from from excessive heat coming off that NVMe. So we got our RAM, we got our new SSD in place. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. You got your CPU, cooling fan, your Wi-Fi card here that could be upgraded to a six if you ever needed to. So now we're going to replace the battery and put it back in place. Simply going to line up our little foot here under this guy and drop it right in place. Thank you. Make sure it's pushed down there good. <clears throat> and put our screws back. Thanks camera guy. I have to buy you a cookie. <laughs> All right, let's see, is this the other screw right here? Somebody answer that darn phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're here after hours, so let the answering service get it. I'm coming over here. All right, and then we got one more right over here, guys. Right here is our last battery screw. So it'll be a nice little upgrade to a couple about double the space on the SSD, double the memory, 16 gigs DDR4, 3200, nice Samsung 970 Evo Plus. So we got our battery, everything's good. We're going to put our cover back on here. Now, I, oop, I always wait to put the screws back in until I know we got a good clone and I don't have to take it back apart again. But I am going uh, to get it lined up here. Just gently push it back into place. Now when you're squeezing on these, like I'm doing now, consciously your lid here, you don't want to squeeze too hard. You want to break your screen. Just be careful. But they generally go back on without too much difficulty. Just like that, guys. All right. So I am going to plug in the power cord just for the heck of it. Now, this might take a minute to post the first time. The BIOS might even give us a checksum error telling us that the configuration has changed, which is fine. So I'm going to hit my power button here. And hopefully everything works. It's got to be patient on these. After you put RAM in, today's new laptops are reading the new memory and the new drive and you just got to be patient on the posting it's not going to be instant all right so this is normal it's just i'm going to hit enter to restart the computer it's telling me the checksum is invalid because the configuration has changed that's all normal i'm just going to hit enter and it gives us an on-screen keyboard because it's a touch screen Now it should just boot like normal if our clone was good. <laughs> got dust. So if you like this video, check out some of my other videos. I got lots of videos on cloning and SSD upgrades and hard drive replacements and using many different types of cloning methods. <clears throat> we'll double check to make sure everything's what it's supposed to be. So you can see everything's there just like it was. Um, I'll go into my task manager real quick. Just type it in the search here. Go to performance. And we'll go to memory. And there we got 16 gigs now of 3200 megahertz memory. And, oop. and if we just open up File Explorer here. Oh, I could have did that. And here's our new 250 gig Samsung SSD. So everything went as planned. Uh, customers should be happy. I appreciate you guys all watching. Like I said, you know, check out more of my videos. If you liked it, give me a like. If you loved it, give me a sub. That would be great. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.